into a, I guess, a new thing I'm gonna try out. I'm gonna just do a, a quick wrap up of some of the winter stuff that has ended recently. And uh, I div kind of divide it into categories, going with like this action anime, drama anime, comedy. I'm gonna go with those three categories and see how it goes. But starting out with this category, I'm gonna do the action series or the action shows of uh, the winter season and stuff that carried over from I think the previous season in fall. So. Which is nice when kind of nice when it happens. You know, everybody likes certain shows that carry over carried over to the winter season. So starting with one of my favorites, that Zeta Child Zeta Karen Children, the Unlimited. Hyobo Kyosuke. Now this series is by uh, Man Globe, and it's 12 episodes, kind of short. And it's basically this group of like, I guess, superpower characters that have each of them have abilities. And you have another character named Andy. He's kind of kind of being a sneaky character. He's he's working for another pe another group of people, and he's on the ship with Hyobo Kyosuke to kind of like infiltrate their little little group. And the main plot of this series, I kind of liked it. It was the fact that we kind of saw a perspective of maybe the bad guys this time instead of the usual good guys. And before the series came out, I checked out the original Zeta to Karen Children, and yeah, it's completely different than what uh, the sequel is to, the, to that. The first season is more comical, follows the uh, the three main girls of, uh, I think, Pandra, the other team? Or Babel, I think it's where they're from. But it follows the three of them, and it's more of a comical series. With hardly gets serious, but there are a few episodes where uh, Hobo uh, Kyosuke pops up in those ep in of the episodes and kind of stirs things around with the queen and all and her friends. But not really any spoilers there, because you know I think the second series is, was done better. I'm glad they didn't go the comic comedy route that went season one. But anyway, for me, it felt like kind of like Kogios. We we're watching from the the villains' perspectives, but secretly we all know that they're not really evil. Well, some of them are, even though <laughs> some certain things happen in this series that pushes Kyosuke to do you know, certain things for his his family, even though he's like super really old. So, the one thing I liked about this series, they had a great cast of characters. Uh, yeah, I think all the characters had interesting abilities. Um, the powers are really cool. Speaking of the powers, they're just really neat how they did all of that with the superpowers. And yeah, but like I said, there's a nice cast of characters. Really fun if you're interested in psychic powers and non like Katara san if you want actual powers like a gun or index. This is just a pretty good a good series you could watch. I'll, I'll recommend it. Next up, hasn't really ended, but it's a short series, uh, Sinew. Each episode's like four minutes long, so the ending I can kind of predict it's going to be like a gag comic thing where it's, oh, we got another season, and, yeah, more episodes. This is by uh, Linden Films, like I said, 13 episodes. It is very short. It's, it's so hilarious. I mean, if you don't laugh at this series, I don't know what's wrong with you then, because there are moments in this, this little short series that just crack me up. And again, like just like Zeta Children, the ca cast of characters are, are kind of interesting. Even though some of them are kind of weird. You got this old man who only likes little girls. Doesn't like anyone that's his age. He's a short, knight-looking guy. And the series, that, well, I got in this series because it's like about all these like heroes that are trying to stop the Demon King. And shortly in the middle of the series, our main characters kind of meet the Demon King, which is this little pink-haired girl. And it's, I don't know, it's just funny. You, you have to watch it. It's kind of hard to explain. I guess in a nutshell, it's fantasy anime wrapped up in comedy. That, that was a fun one. Next up, a 12 episode series by from Ginko, which is a uh, Senran Kagura. And most people probably pass in this series because it is mindless, etchy fan service. You know, half naked girls running around in skimpy bikinis fighting other ninjas. And for me, I, I got into this because every season I pick up one of these etchy shows just to have some mindless entertainment to watch. Because Really, who watches those for the plot? I mean, I don't watch them for the story. I'm watching them for, you know, the service stuff. But, eh, whatever it is, what it is. Um, in this this series, you have a cast of, like like five main hero characters. And by the start of the series, I did not like any of them. 
I was, you know, close to dropping this series early on because I didn't care too much for the hero characters. I was like, these main girls are kind of terrible. They're not very good ninjas, and half the time they spend taking showers or baths and playing around with each other, which it's fine. I mean, it is an itchy show. So, and while that goes on, you have the evil team of ninjas that I kind of like them more than the the main people because they're far more interesting to watch that interactions and stuff they do and just like Zeta Children the bad guys aren't really bad you know they're just it's just from whatever perspective you you look at it as sure they're on the evil team but once you see some episodes with them interacting with each other you realize they're not different than the main cast so but yeah this is if you want mindless action you don't care too much for a story and you don't mind girls running around just in swimsuits every once in a while but that's this is this is for you definitely and rounding up, the next one is a 12 episode series by Actis, which I think started way earlier than the winter, but it recently ended in the winter season with the uh, girls in Panzer. I know, you're thinking, but that's a movie show, isn't it? Well, technically yes, but technically not. It's the rough the rundown the series is about these, I guess, high school girls that participate in tank battles, which it does sound kind of stupid just by hearing it, but after you get past the first couple episodes, you get, you know, reeled into the world that they have, and it's all, like, girls doing military stuff. Uh, not so much, I guess, Strike Witches is a good comparison, but this series is a like, black fan service, where Strike Witches is all about fan service, you know, like, fancy shops, and the camera angles, and all the suggestive stuff they do in that, but, yeah, this is, it's kind of clean compared to most shows. It doesn't really have a lot of service, so want something like that. And they have actual CGI tank battles, which, yeah, CGI and anime doesn't really go together quite well for me. But this, you know, actors did a really good job with the tank battles, and they, they all look you know, professionally done. They've done their research on certain tanks, and stuff like that. And throughout the series, the girls do these competitions, so in a way, it's almost a sports anime because you have various countries versus other countries and they do these big tank battles and they're not really killing each other they're mostly hitting the tank beat the tank up enough that a white flag pops up out of it and that signals that the tank is defeated and they move on to the next target so it's not really a violent show either and I found myself during every fight just you know you get so pumped up cheering on for the girls the main girls to win that you just get pulled into their own little world and you know so i mean if you're a military buff and you like tanks and you like world war ii or any war i guess this might be good for you i mean yeah it's first glance they like these cute little girls yeah i know but they actually blended the cute moments with the action moments quite well and for me i would rather watch this again over strike witches which like i said is more fan service but that's that. That's Girls in Panzer. Pretty funny. You should check it out. And the last on my list, 22 episode series by Production IG with uh, Psychopaths. And this is really cool. I love this series. It was the beginning. I wasn't too sure about it because I was just like, oh, it's gonna be a crime show. Oh, this is gonna be a very predictable series. And I don't usually like mystery too much in anime, but this is you know a series not about high schoolers, which is nice. And a lot of people are like praising that because who would want to watch more high schoolers solve mysteries? I mean, I, that's a fun concept, but it's been done a million times. But anyway, yeah, these adult characters, they're all in their like 20s, 18s, around there somewhere. And it's like a futuristic city, futuristic world where technology is like king in this. You know, they have a couple scenes where Akane, the main girl, is like standing in front of a mirror trying different outfits. and. Just by push of a button on our watch, she can change clothes at an instant. Same with her bedroom, she can change the way it looks. But they don't really harp on the technology too much. Because, uh, yeah, it, this show's about a group of police detectives. You have, like, the main detectives, and you have these people called the enforcers, which are kind of basically a nutshell criminals that, you know, have they've done some bad, bad stuff in, in their time. And the whole world is based on like a crime efficiency, you know, a, your le I guess level of uh, crime and 
and crime intensify like that. Hire people like as you get into jail and things like that. Because they use these you know, weapons called dominators, which are these weird technological guns that have like several settings, like you have stun, like a taser, a stun option, or a lethal, you know, one shot kill. And it's pretty gruesome when they hit you with it. You just, you know, explode basically. And they don't really have time to do a court system or anything like that. If you're guilty, you're guilty. And that's that. But I would say if, you know, if you're watching like regular TV, you know, <laughs> yeah, I know, real TV, right? If you watch Fox, they have a show called The Following. Which to me, Psychopaths felt a little bit like that because every little case they, they work on in this show kind of leads up to the next case or kind of like bleeds into the next one, which I kind of like that aspect. I didn't, not so much like, oh, this is this arc, that arc, that arc. They have these long shonen shows. And the only thing that I would say about this series without spoiling is Kogami, he's, he's really cool and he's a main character. I, I found him to be the most interesting at the start. For as whereas well you had the opposite of Akane, I did not like her at all at the start. But you know, that she's I, I guess assuming that it's supposed to be us in the show. We're supposed to be living our cop thing through her because you know at the beginning she's scared and doesn't know much about police stuff. But she uses her head a lot, and towards the end she becomes a great character. So yeah, even though I hate her at the beginning, she did redeem herself and become kind of cool at the end. So, that was my spoiler free version of that. That was Psychopaths. But if you definitely like police dramas, stuff like that, futuristic worlds, Psychopaths is probably definitely for you. And that's it for my action. I know we had uh, another show with Psychopaths, with the robotics notes, but I'm going to be talking about that later with some blogger friends of mine. I'll probably put a video with that and share it with you guys. But that's my things on action of this this kind of winter season. Or of the stuff that I liked anyway. I mean, I have two more categories to put shows in and I'll get on that soon. So, until then.